Thanks, Chris. Quick questions? Anyone? If not, then thanks. And our next speaker is Olivier Savry, uh, who's uh, working at CEA. Uh, and uh, he'll be talking about an intrinsically secure RISC-V processor. OK. Um. Oh, uh, yes. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, just a few words to, to say that uh, CLAT uh, joined uh, the RISC-V Foundation uh, in December. And the main reason for adopting the RISC-V uh, ISA is the possibility of rethinking the security of processor in a free way. And uh, I would like to, uh, to illustrate the, this work. Uh, I would like to present you uh, uh, a new family of intrinsically secure processor, and we name it Intrinsic. Um, we uh, we we know. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, when when we set up this project, uh, we first ask ourselves uh, at length about the reason of this avalanche of attacks. And uh, in, indeed, uh, we are facing a snowball effect, uh, and uh, that made me think that uh, the worst is yet to come. And uh, uh, so why all uh, those attacks? Uh, we can uh, look at the, the attack side and see that there, there are more and more attackers uh, better equipped. But we have a duty to look at the defense size and see that uh, in uh, many uh, 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 development projects of embedded systems, security is not anticipated. Uh, and uh, because uh, security skills are really long to acquire, and so they became rare and expensive. And it will be difficult to put a security expert behind uh, each developer. So, and even if you're an expert, you sometimes feel naked uh, in front of certain vulnerabilities. So to, to answer those issues, uh, we, we propose to change the paradigm and to stop uh, setting security apart in a TE or in a secure uh, element uh, or to stop, uh, to stop patching uh, vulnerabilities uh, one after the other or one by one. And uh, we propose uh, um, an an intrinsically secure application processor that uh, ensures its own security, and uh, a kind of plug-in secure processor. Uh, the developer just have to compile his code uh, with a good compiler, put it on the good platform, and then it will be sure that uh, uh, the vulnerability he may add uh, will not be exploited. So uh, to, to build uh, an, an intrinsically uh, processor, we have to, to have a, a large knowledge, I would say an, ex an exhaustive knowledge of the vulnerability of processor. Uh, first, uh, so you, you can see here a schematic of uh, a multi-core SOC. And uh, first you, you can, we can have some vulnerability with a fault injection attack or such channel attacks that can affect uh, all elements of the, or, of the, of the core, of the core of the SOC, like uh, the memory hierarchy, uh, the core with the pipeline, ILU, and uh, the registers, and even the control signal of the pipeline. We, if, you, if you look at the memory hierarchy, you have uh, first uh, the flash memory, which is uh, vulnerable. Uh, you know that uh, 
a bit cell now allowed to store several uh, bits uh, of different pages. And then you can have, um, uh, when you program uh, one bit, you can uh, disturb the another one uh, and uh, on uh, another pages. GRAM is also vulnerable with a drama attack or the well-known raw hammer attack. Uh, you can, uh, um, by writing a, a line in the matrix, you can uh, uh, disturb an, uh, adjacent lines. And uh, SRAM also are vulnerable. vulnerable. Uh, uh, normally, they are vulnerable to soft errors, but with a uh, node below 10 nanometers, we can have uh, also cell-to-cell -cell coupling. That could be a problem. Uh, cache memory also uh, uh, have problem with cache uh, timing side channel attacks with a well-known flush and reload uh, attack that uh, is the basis of... Uh, the exploita exploitation of um, oh, sorry the, ex the exploitation of um, of the micro architecture architecture architectural uh, uh, leakage with a spectrum meltdown spectra affect the branch prediction and meltdown affect the speculative execution. Power management also uh, can be attacked. Uh, for example, an attacker can change the, by software the frequency and the voltage of the CPU and then uh, induce uh, uh, errors that can bypass the, TU, the trust zone, for example. So uh, we can see in this uh, quick survey that uh, uh, many of, of those vulnerabilities could be treated as a lack of confidentiality and integrity of data and instruction. To solve that, uh, uh, there is a, a solution which is authenticated uh, encryption of data and instruction. We use for that the Encrypt and Mac structure, which has uh, proof of security. Uh, so the instruction of that or data are ciphered with a key or uh, under announce, and the, this is associated to uh, an integrity Mac, an integrity tag uh, or a Mac uh, for message authentication code. Uh, there, there is a, a problem if you only do that because if there's only one bit which is wrong in the in, in this uh, set, you, you cannot decipher it. So uh, you have to add uh, an error correcting code. And uh, in many uh, memories, you will find uh, them. For example, in flash memory, you have TurboCon now. In DRAM, you have uh, BCH code. And uh, in, uh, even in cache uh, memories, you have um, parity or segdet. So to also to ensure uh, the random access, uh, we have a nonce which is a function of the address. So you, you will say that uh, this scheme is uh, quite cumbersome, but uh, we will see that it's a lot to answer a lot of security objective, like uh, memory, uh, like uh, spatial and temporal memory safety, and uh, CFI, control flow integrity. So we integrated this uh, encryption in uh, a, a Pulpino, in a Rift Pulpino on a FPGA. So first we added the basic security feature, uh, which is a, a password protected uh, debug interface, which allow us to, to store a cryptographic key in a protected register. And then the decryption encryption uh, block is shared between uh, instruction RAM and data RAM uh, thanks to buffers. Uh, it's not really easy to find uh, an authenticated encryption uh, to, to which allow um, memory encryption. It should be uh, lightweight and, uh, and fast. It should uh, enable to cipher and decipher with the same block. 
it should also encrypt instruction, uh, instruction of, on data of programs. It should support associated data. We, we need also a random access to memory that require a tweak or a, an initialization vector or nonce. Uh, we need also a memory addressing uh, and uh, to respect alignment. And uh, we wish also to be compatible with operating system because operating system sh could, uh, sh could do a load and store of code lines and move uh, pages in physical memories. And uh, we wish also that it's, it will be compatible with already compiled binaries. Uh, to, so, to improve uh, the throughput, we, we are obliged to group uh, uh, the data or instruction by a group of uh, four 32 bits uh, words. Uh, and we add uh, metadata, which uh, is in which uh, there is a uh, um, uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, a part of the nonce and then the, the MAC or integrity tag. Like that, we have a 256-bit memory alignment, and the overhead is reduced to 100% in, for the memory size. To, to do this encryption, we finally uh, choose uh, ASCON, which is a SCSAR finalist, and uh, in to to compute uh, the scheme that uh, I show you on the previous uh, slide, it required uh, 40 permutation P. Uh, and uh, to, to, do, to, do, to compute it fast, uh, we only implement uh, uh, one instance of uh, the permutation. And then the 40, uh, 40 permutation are computed asynchronously in a four CPU cycle. Like that, uh, we remain uh, light, lightweight, and uh, we are still fast. Uh, also, we will evaluate uh, the new candidate in the recent uh, lightweightness competition to see if uh, there's no better candidate. So, how the program is uh, encrypted? A program is a, is a succession of basic blocks. A basic block is also a succession of instruction with uh, only one entry point and only one exit point. This, uh, it is terminated uh, by a branch or, or jump. Two minutes. And then uh, uh, you can see that uh, each instruction is uh, ciphered with a nonce, which is uh, its uh, address. And uh, then an attacker will uh, not be able uh, to, to modify the, the instruction because uh, it's associated with a MAC, which is not uh, written it uh, for readability reason. And uh, we can see also that an attacker will not be able uh, to swap uh, lines of instruction because uh, this is, uh, there is the address. So this inscription scheme is totally independent of the compiler and can be done uh, with uh, any uh, binaries. So the, excuse me, the, the problem in this, uh, in this scheme is that an attacker can jump anywhere in the program. So we don't want that. And so we add a, a control for integrity. In fact, each basic block has a, a, its own mask. So mask zero for BB zero and mask one for basic block one. And then the mask is incremented with a bitwise permutation. And uh, the, the, the problem to solve uh, when we, you, you do that, it's uh, how we change the mask uh, when we do a jump. For that, we introduce a new uh, instruction, load mask. Uh, which uh, by the, is uh, introduced by the compiler to set a mask uh, to be used uh, by the next jump to unmask uh, the next uh, basic block. So, uh, okay. so like We're that, we, mod 
Yeah, I've just finished. So uh, we have modified LLVM and Comser to the VAT. And we also, also uh, managed uh, to do an indirect jump uh, just by adding the Cipher mask uh, in the, at the top of the basic block uh, here. So just to conclude, just to conclude, uh, we have a future challenge. Uh, uh, we would like to also protect the pipeline against uh, false, false injection and against uh, side channel leakage and uh, remain uh, resilient when attacks are performed. And we would like to, to go towards a 64-bit uh, processor and uh, towards a multitask OS. Thank you very so, much. Thank you for your attention. No time left.